rethink the criminal justice system. Some of the causes are years of uh, segregation and racism. cinema has a rich history which can be credited to its direct relationship with societal affairs and its tendency to mirror public opinion on a massive scale. It has been a medium of mobilization and consolidation for leaders and an escape from daily life for commoners since the early 20th century. Following the declaration of war on Japan, the government of America created a Bureau of Motion Picture Affairs to coordinate the production of entertainment features with patriotic, morale-boosting themes and messages about the American way of life. It demonstrated the nature of the enemy and the allies, civilian responsibility on the home front and the fighting forces themselves. The advent of network television broadcasting in the 1940s provided Hollywood with its first real competition for American leisure time by offering consumers movies in the home. Instead of depending on spectacle and special effects to create excitement, the new lower budget films tried to develop thought provoking or perverse stories reflecting the psychological and social problems besetting returning war veterans and other adapting to post war life. Certain movies tried to capture social problems like racism, for example, Elia Kazan's Gentleman's Agreement. Stuart Heisler's smash up talked about alcoholism and Anatol Litvak's The Snake Pit focused on mental illness. The years 1967-69 marked a turning point in American film history. The films were unequal aesthetically but all shared a cynicism towards established values and a fascination with apocalyptic violence. There was a sense that such films might provide the catalyst for a cultural revolution. In addition, filmmakers like Coppola and Scorsese created movies like The Godfather, You don't even think to call me Godfather. Mean Streets and Raging Bull. I wanted to have a very open, honest approach to the imagery and the story in the scenes uh, that were not in the ring in Raging Bull. And that came a lot from a kind of wiping away of all technique that I had thought about before and going back to sort of an impact that I had when I was about five or six years old having seen Italian neorealist films. Responding to the political climate, the studios also produced some of their most jingoistic films since the Korean War, endorsing the notions of political betrayal in Vietnam in the movie Rambo in 1985, the fear of a Soviet invasion in Red Dawn again in 1985, and military vigilantism in the movie Top Gun released in 1986. Another significant development in the late 20th century American cinema was the emergence of a self-designated independent film movement. Among these were films by African Americans, Native Americans and Chicano and Chicana filmmakers as well as works representing feminist and gay and lesbian cultural viewpoints and experience. Documentary filmmaking from these and other perspectives also thrived in the independent world. Independent non-fiction films of significance included Aaron Morris, The Thin Blue Line, released in 1988. World War II physically and economically devastated the film industries of the Soviet Union, Japan and most European nations. Italy's early surrender, however, left its facilities relatively intact, enabling the Italian cinema to lead the post-World War II film renaissance with its development of the neorealist movement. After the Second World War, Italian cinema entered its golden period, known as neorealism. Directors like Roberto Rossellini, 
Vittorio De Sica, Lucino Visconti, and others set stories around the lower working class, showing some of the more economic and moral conditions of post-war Italy. Most essential to a neorealist film is that it portrays a description of daily life, usually bringing attention to contemporary issues. Neorealism had enormous influence on future movements such as the British social realism, Brazilian cinema novo, and the French and Czech new wave. In reaction, a younger generation of filmmakers led by Lindsay Anderson, Czechoslovak born Karl Reis, and Tony Richardson organized the free cinema movement in the mid 1950s. Its purpose was to produce short, low budget documentaries illuminating problems of contemporary life. For example, Anderson's Oh Dreamland, released in 1953, and Richardson's Mama Don't Allow, released in 1955. The film industries of China, Taiwan, and Korea were marked by government restrictions for the most of the 20th century and the majority of their output consisted of propaganda films. <laughs> Loosening of many restrictions in the 1980s and 90s resulted in a new wave of Asian directors who attained worldwide prominence. At the turn of the 21st century, China's fifth generation cinema was known for such outstanding young directors as Zhang Yimou, who specialized in tales of political oppression and sexual repression. Serious post war Indian cinema was for years associated with the work of Satyajit Ray a director of singular talent who produced the great Apu Triology under the influence of both Jean Renoir and Italian neorealism. A traditional path was followed by Shyam Benegal, whose films Ankur, The Seedling, released 1974, Nishan, Night's End, released in 1975, Manthan, The Churning, released in 1976, are relatively realistic in form and deeply committed in socio-political terms. During the 1970s, the Soviet cinema experienced a far-reaching liberalization under the regime of party secretary Mikhail Gorbachev, whose policy of klasnost, that is openness, took control of the industry away from bureaucratic censors and placed it in the hands of the filmmakers themselves. Formally suppressed films such as Elim Klimov's Agonia, released 1975, were distributed for the first time and films that dealt confrontationally with Stalinism such as Abuladze's Repentance, released 1987, were made without government interference. Under new leadership in the late 1970s, the ruling Chinese Communist Party sought to instigate economic development and open the country to international commerce and communication. Some veteran filmmakers resumed their careers and one, Zi Jin, made a controversial work, Hibiscus Town, released 1986, showing the deleterious effect of communist political dogma on a rural village. Among the outstanding figures of European cinema were Pedro Almodovar of Spain, Manuel de Oliveira of Portugal, Theo Angelo Pulos of Greece, Aki Karusumaki of Finland, and Nani Moretti of Italy. Almodovar, who had broken sexual taboos in his early work, entered a mature period of great human subtlety and complexity in the 1990s and 2000s with works like The Flower of My Secret released in 1995, Live Flesh released in 1997 and All About My Mother released in 1999. British filmmakers were active in alternative cinema practices. Derek Charman's films dealt with the subject of male homosexuality. His movie Blue released in 1993 was a remarkable work showing only a monochrome blue screen while on the soundtrack he discussed the failure of his eyesight as a result of AIDS. Talking about contemporary cinema, it is about reflecting on our pasts and taking inspiration for future movements. Some movies that have been a source of inspiration for many are Gandhi, 
The film doesn't delve deeply enough into Mahatma Gandhi as an individual but is required viewing for anyone who wants to see an epic about a non-violent movement that changed the world. Moving on, we have Milk, a moving reflection on the life, death and legacy of Harvey Milk. Not simply a gay rights movie but a film about social movements and the cost to the individuals who lead them. Up next we have a short film about killing. Polish director Krzysztof Kieślowski announced himself as one of cinema's greatest poets with his series of films based on the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue. His response to Thou shalt not kill, this film is a story about a murder and the capital punishment meted out to the perpetrator that was so powerful that it led to the abolition of death penalty in his home country. While the movie industry has been growing around the world, a major player that has emerged in the recent years is Bollywood or the Indian cinema. Producing movies like Pink, Chapak and Razi, Indian cinema has inspired women movements and given them support to enforce their rights in the society challenging the norms of patriarchy. Various attempts have been made to settle border disputes and forge national unity through movies like Uri, the Surgical Strike, Bajrangi Bhaijan, Bharat, Lagan, Rang de Basanti, and many others that draw upon experiences from different parts of the world's largest democracy to inspire movements all over the country and beyond.